welcome to attract and engaging the next generation of home buyers. Um, my goal is always to share some insight and data on the expectations of the next phase of home buyers and what has changed. My hope is you'll be able to apply this information to help your business grow and close more transactions. I mean, obviously, that's why you're here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here watching this amazingly boring class. So let's just dive in and get started. Obviously, I'm Julie Herman. In this, my photo is my sweet, not so innocent AC Eli. Carrie Ann is my incredible licensed loan assistant. So if you need anything at all, Pop into the chat, chat and tag her and she will help through any part of this. She is amazing and together we are an elite team. We merge technology, old fashioned customer service and education into strategic mortgage planning that's geared to each client's individual needs. With our team, our powerful in-house lending, underwriting and funding, we make home ownership a reality for millions. We bring you weekly lattes with a shot of mortgage knowledge every Wednesday at 8 a.m. And we also host monthly agent workshops to help you strategically navigate your business through changing markets and environments. We help to empower your clients to overcome their struggles with credit, affordability, and knowledge and help them grow to be ready for becoming small buyers. We are here to help you anytime you need us, even in a mortgage emergency. Be a part of our network. I add more helpful tips and tricks daily in our private Facebook group, Empowering Real Estate Agents. So stay tuned. Our next big rollout is actually going to be a YouTube channel dedicated to agents and consumer education on demand. If you're not part of our private community, let Carrie Ann know, send us a message or shoot me an email or text and we'll make sure that you're invited inside that group. So here's our agenda for today. Who are the next gen buyers? How do we need to help them overcome buyer affordability? What next gen buyers really want from their agents? What the top amenities are that they will not consider living without? What must have digital tools do you need to remain relevant? How can you attract, engage, and build trust with these buyers? And then obviously a summary. So who exactly is the next gen buyers? Next gen, which refers to millennials, they are a big portion born between 1981 to 1996. Generation Z was born between 96 to 2010, and they account for one out of every three home purchases. The oldest millennial or next gen is now 42, and the youngest is 22. Next gen home buyers are the largest segment of the market and the most diverse generation in U.S. history. According to National Association of Realtors, home buyers under the age of 40 make up 37% of home purchases. The NAR published its research data in its annual home buyer and sell generational report. So a lot of the data that I shared today is actually inside this report. Carrie Ann's going to go ahead and add a copy of this in the chat. You can download it. We'll also put it in our Thursday email as well. It's staff, so it can be born, but there's a lot of great relevant information that'll really help you identify who it is that you're talking to. NAR began tracking the home buying habits of millennials, but in two separate groups because they are so different from each other. Younger millennials who are aged 24 to 32, and then older millennials aged 33 to 42. Younger millennials, which again is that 24 to 32 year old markers, they made up 18% of home buyers. They also accounted for 6% of sellers. 81% of younger millennials are first time home buyers. That's kind of obvious. That's not a surprise. 21% of those buyers are not married. 65% of younger millennials found the home they purchased online. Great news, though, that 92% of this generation used an agent to represent them on their home purchase. 15% already own a home. What is the top stat that really sticks out for you? For me, it was the unmarried stats, and it was the percentage that used agents. 
I track and review these reports annually, and 92% of any age range buyer using an agent nowadays is a really great stat. That means that they are highly driven on the full customer experience, and they are driving away from a period of time where we saw a lot of buyers wanting to do everything themselves online. So that's a pretty cool stat to keep watching. <clears throat> Older millennials, again, 33 to 42, they made up the largest share of home buyers by generation at 25% of all home buyers. They accounted for 19% of sellers. 48% of older millennials are first time home buyers. They all had the highest share of married couples at 64% and the highest share of households with children at 61%. Those are pretty common statistics, so those didn't really surprise me. 60% of older millennials found the home they purchased online and 88% used an agent to represent them on their purchase. Lastly, 41% of older millennials already own a home, which means many of them are ready to become sellers. So out of these, what was the stat that really stuck out the most to you? For me, it again was at 88% for the buyers. So 60% found their home online, 88% used an agent to buy. This is one of those groups that like to do everything themselves versus the younger millennials that really wanted help from a real estate professional. So that one stuck out to me. Across the entire board of any age category, pay attention to noticing single females are buying more homes over single males. So for all buyers across the board, 19% were single females, 9% were single males, 60% were married couples, and 9% were unmarried. The biggest changes between today's buyer and tomorrow's buyer versus their parents and grandparents is the percentage of unmarried versus married buyers. That's a pretty large statistical difference. 21% of buyers, 23 to 31, were unmarried. 4% of buyers between 76 to 96 were unmarried. So when you're creating message and education, what you're trying to convey in your messages, your images that you use, the powerful family or spouse words that you use, does that resonate with the buyers that you're wanting to attract in your marketing? And that's really something to start watching and paying attention to. So interested in knowing each range group and what we call those groups, here's your chart. It's the silent generation. You've got your boomers, your older and younger, your silent generation, your Gen X, and your millennials all put down on this pretty chart until we start adding more. So let's look at how next gen is changing housing. So next gen buyers are driving change in housing more than any other generation. One, they're willing to shop for over a year to find an acceptable home. They want both modern home technology and a location that fits their lifestyle. They are huge fans of smart home concepts and smart home products like Amazon Alexa, high-speed internet, and Wi-Fi. Those are non-negotiable. If they can't get a cell phone signal at that location or if they don't have reliable Wi-Fi, they won't even consider that home even if it meant everything else was perfect. They expect a digital buying experience too. They have totally grown up in a digital environment. Millennials don't want to spend days touring homes in person. Instead, they want to shop for a home the same way they shop for everything else. Everything they do is online. 99% of millennials start their home search online and 58% found their current home on a mobile device. So what are the primary reasons that next gens even want to buy a home? So the number one motivating factor for purchasing a home is the desire to own a home of their own. Write this down. What about being a homeowner is important to you? This needs to be a top conversation starting question to help engage the conversation with those buyers. Finding their drive will help them open up and in turn trust you more because they shared a personal dream with you. For the older millennials, it's the need for a larger home and living space. And again, it's good to know because when you're showcasing properties, 
you want to be able to identify specific to that person why they are buying a home and how this fits within their why. We know they want to own a home of their own, but what's the primary reason for the timing of their purchase? It's all in the feelings for our buyers because it was the right time. 45% of millennial buyers decide to buy a home and own or mortgage for 30 years because the timing was right. Only 20% of buyers aged 23 to 41 decided to buy a home because of affordability rates and financing options. They buy based on emotion, not so much based on need. This is really important to understand when you're showing a home because you could find a home that meets everything that's perfect. It matches all of their wants. But emotionally, if they're not feeling connected, the emotional aspect is not something you can find for them. That comes from motivation, excitement, and mindset. This group will take the longest to buy a home because it's not based on math and timing. It's emotional connection. 40% of older millennials are buying homes to also take care of aging parents. Would they be looking for certain amenities in a home or neighborhood? And that could be another question you ask. Would you have any need for the caretaking of parents or relatives in the future? Will we need to consider finding a property that we can add a second kitchen to later for your parents? Spend more time with your aging parents and grandparents is a really big push for the timing that millennials choose on the purchase of their home. The number one challenge currently for first-time homebuyers is affordability. I'm sure you would agree. It doesn't matter how many times you say on social media, the interest rate is cheaper today than the 1980s. The value, the price take of the item you're purchasing is more expensive. The wages are higher, but that value of an item is more expensive. So 6%, 5%, 3% are going to have very variable ways that that affordability fix affects our buyers. So how do we help them overcome that affordability issue? Well, first off, understand that almost 100% of home buyers finance their home purchase. So your lender or the lender they are considering is crucial to the transaction. I recently pre-approved a buyer that had a car note. So it was an expensive car payment. Another lender didn't think about just telling them to pay it off at closing to adjust a very large percentage of what they could afford to purchase. That comes to who you are pairing up with as a lender, because if the lender can't figure out those small little moving pieces to help the client understand affordability, help them see their monthly payment differences, help them see that together their new mortgage is less than maybe other debts and their rent put together, you're going to miss out on that affordability to be able to teach your clients what they really can afford. So it's really crucial. The lender that they're considering to use is somebody that's pushing them in the right educational information aspect. That solution is education. The first place to start overcoming affordability is education. Next gen buyers are misinformed about what it takes to finance and purchase a home. This is where you and your lender partner can collaborate to help educate mutual clients. So a lending tree survey revealed that 34% of consumers believed you needed 20% down to purchase a home. Last year, almost 2 million buyers were first time home buyers. 34% is a significant percentage of people who need better education on buying a home. So kind of drop it in the chat here and let me know, what do you think was the average down payment on a home for millennials last year? Eight percent for the younger millennials, 10 percent for older millennials. And across the entire board, 13 percent was the average down payment percentage on a buy transaction that was financed. 13 percent. I'm an older millennial. We have multiple homes. On our most recent one we purchased during COVID, we did exactly 10%. The private mortgage insurance is small compared to either having to save more and risk the home price going up 
or taking income away from a compound interest that I'm going to create through retirements and stocks. 10% makes sense, but that's where the education piece comes in. Millennials think private mortgage insurance is horrible until we break down their numbers and show them how little it is, how long it stays, and what steps they can take to actually get rid of it sooner. 10% makes great sense. 8% makes fabulous sense. 3% down on your first time home as a conventional buyer, leaving you cash to pay off some credit cards makes a lot more sense than 20% down any day. This is why we need to educate that 34% of surveyed people that think that they need 20% down. 43% of people believe that purchasing a home requires a two-year commitment in the same job and good credit. It doesn't. 40% of first-time home buyers said qualifying for a mortgage was one of the biggest fears related to home buying. So what's our key takeaway? Be the guide. Help people along their journey. Educate them by sharing client stories. Post relevant content to blogs, social media, and videos that help to demystify the various phases of home buying and the mortgage process. Team up with your lender. So to sum it up, millennial buyers continue to make up the largest and they will be the largest and growing share of home buyers at 43% this last year and they are going to dominate the market for a while. 81% of younger millennials um, are first time home buyers. Older millennials had the highest share of married couples while younger had the highest share of unmarried. Um, younger millennials were the most educated age group, with 90% holding at least an associate's degree, followed by older millennials across the board from any buyer range. Younger millennials were also more likely to move directly from a family member's home before renting. So they stay in a home, they stay there for several more years, then they purchase a home. They drop, they jump, they don't do the rental process. So that's really important too. And then buyers continue to finance their homes, which is really similar to the past year. You know, only really the people that have owned homes for five or more years, they benefited from the net equity the growth that we saw happening during COVID. They were able to take that and pay off debt, put a small down on a second home, go mortgage-free, buy an RV, they changed their lives, which is a very unusual circumstance. Typically, buying a home is building net wealth. People that own a home are going to be more wealthier when it comes to retirement than somebody that rents for their whole life. But we need to educate people to understand that, but we need to understand what they're going through. If almost 100% of home buyers finance their home and 40% of them consider qualifying for a mortgage among their biggest fears, doesn't it just make logical sense that you're partnering with a lender that delivers a better client experience and leverages financing to over overcome affordability and adjust to changes in the market? You and your loan officer have a unique opportunity to connect with next-gen buyers through co-created content and a collaborative partnership. You can create the ultimate home buying elite team. The number one source, more than any other age group, for next-gen buyers to choose a lender is their agent. Next, it's their friends and family, their banks, and their online search. They feel less comfortable reaching out to personal networks or the internet to choose a lender. They have trust issues. They're leaning on you, a real estate professional, to help guide them and assemble an entire team of elite people and resources that they need to buy their home. They want you to tell them who to actually pick. They don't want multiple options. They want a simple guidebook that tells them, here's my best lender and why. Here's my home, best home inspector and why. Here's my best company for home insurance and why. Here's my personal doctor and why. Here's the CPA that I use and why. Here's the best restaurants, the best painters, the best garage door companies. Here's the best technology. Here's the best Wi-Fi service for this area. They don't like multiple options. They want trusted, 
and referred suggestions because the fear for them of making a decision holds them back. Now, who's got a listing that's just sitting? You should be. We're gaining quickly on how long homes are sitting in the market to become more of a buyer's market versus a seller. So obviously, we try to do open houses. We push on the door knocking. We reverse market. And then we go back to the sellers and start proposing price reductions. And then how's that going? What if there's another solution to price reductions that fixes affordability for a buyer and saves the sellers? Would you be open-minded to learning more about that? <laughs> well, you don't have a choice to be here because that's what we're going to talk about is the seller buy-down strategy. So here's an example of the seller buy-down uh, strategy. The first column on the left, this is where I'm showing you we have a purchase price of $590,000. we are putting down 5% at an interest rate at 5.375%. This total monthly payment is $4,118.22. The income that's needed to qualify is $123,000 some change. The next column is showing that exact house with a price reduction of $15,000. So instead of selling the house at $590,000, exact same rates and, and down payments and everything puts the purchase price at 575. It saves the client $95.42 a month, which is great. But the cost of the seller is $15,000. And a savings of $95 isn't going to have buyers banging down the door to purchase that home. So call number three is our solution. This is your seller buy down strategy. Instead of a price reduction, the seller agrees to provide a credit to the buyer to buy down the interest rate. What you get then would be a 4.875% interest rate and a monthly savings of $172.43. That's almost $200 savings for your buyers a month. And for the seller, that means they've saved $7,000 because the cost of this buy down in this example was $8,407. So your sellers didn't have to cough up $15,000 and your buyer's affordability was fixed by reducing the overall monthly payment by almost $200 a month. Can you see the power of a seller buy-down to increase affordability? The question is, how do you showcase this to explain it to both the seller and to the buyer? And how do we advertise that? It's where we need to get modern about listings. My website, I have allows me to showcase you, your website, your contact, show the buyers the walkability and information around their new future home. Because remember, 99% of our millennials are starting their process online looking at homes. Showcasing mortgage presentations and using the seller buy down, we can help families find affordability and understand how it works. We can do introduction videos of you, Matterport, walkthrough, all the things that buyers are looking online when they want to look through anything that they purchase, a vehicle, an RV, a house, when they shop on Amazon. That's why on those powerful websites, they use video walkthroughs and photos and specs and then tell them what their estimated monthly payment is because that is designed to speak to a buyer of the future. From this, we can create a listing flyer that has a QR code embedded in it. And that flyer, we can put in your flyer box. We can deliver it to the neighbors. We can showcase multiple listings that you already have that the buyers might be interested in. You can have these as a presentation inside your listing buyer and take that binder with you to your next listing presentation, showing sellers how you are thinking modern with technology to bring the buyers to their home. There is no end on how we can put moving pieces together. And I really like the introduction process on these videos. We can record a Zoom video where the focus is on the person speaking and introduce you and talk about you as an agent and person. We can host webinars about home buying. We can host webinars about mortgage insurance. These are all very relevant educational pieces to help buyers get past the fear of home ownership and mortgages. Remember, the key concept to this generation is education and emotional connection. 
If they don't hear you talking in videos, if they don't get to know you, you are just a cold person to them. They need to connect, to engage with you, to be attracted to asking you for more information. So what do the buyers really want from you? Because with anything, it always changes over time. So the top benefit they receive from working with agents is helping them understand the process. Remember, they are not a trusting generation. They want to see and read content. They want to help understand the process. Do you have a first-time home buyer roadmap? A documented process and infographic to content series and guiding first-time buyers on their journey. If not, you're missing out on this opportunity with them. Here's an example of an actual free downloadable guide. Carrie Ann's going to drop this in the chat. We will follow up with the new and Canva link to it. We can help you walk through it. A great way to engage prospects, add value, and build your audience is by having these items available to quickly share. Um, another idea that I have as well about that website that we showcase to you showing you this is we can link in here your home buyer guide, your video about you, a little information about um, the process. And when people on Facebook ask who's the best agent to work with, instead of just dropping your business card, your name, you could drop this link and say, Here's all about me, and it could be multiple videos that we've recorded and dropped on here. Think outside the box. So here's an example that as a lender, this is what I use for my buyers. I create a welcome website that's private to my buyers. I have the QR code created for them, and then I connect their PDFs in here, their home buying guides. I explain to them their home buying journey and I educate them through technology by building trust. These are the things your buyers of tomorrow are needing, and these are the tools that you can use to get there. And I can help you with all of this. So again, we'll send you a link so that you can actually go and look at a real presentation that I sent to buyers. And then we can talk about how to start incorporating this into your business strategy. You could do a series of Instagram carousel posts that educate and inform. Again. Think about content that helps guide people along their journey. Talk about the seller buy-down as a way to combat affordability issues. Talk about understanding renovation costs, working with the wrong people, share stories and common mistakes that your home buyers have made. So are you kind of getting where I'm going with all this? It's all education. So top benefits, uh, additional benefits of working with an agent are pointing out unnoticed property features or faults, because again, people are excited when they're walking through the house and they're not noticing things. Agents provide a better list of service providers, lenders, repair people, landscapers. How about the ABCs of real, the best vendor list? And you're a local agent, right? The assumption is that you know a lot about the local area. First time home buyers are looking to tap into your knowledge of the area they're searching for a home and they want you to suggest potential alternatives too. So do you feel like this is great information that you can really use to help design a marketing campaign that's completely different, that's going to resonate with who you're trying to communicate with? So now what else do agents or next gen want from their agents? Well, communication. They want personal calls, sharing updates on activities, related to their searches, financing, negotiations, and purchases. They want alerts to any new listings or price changes, because again, this generation is used to Amazon delivery. They don't like waiting. Email is preferred first texting for important needs or requests in addition to calls, and they want a mobile friendly website for easy navigation, sharing, and communication. So score yourself in each of these areas and look for improvement. Better yet, just ask your first time home buyers how they prefer to communicate and adjust to their preferences. Use your weekly, daily success plan I send you on every Thursday. Preview homes for those looking or thinking to sell. Share the previewed listings online with them. Help them understand the market. Help them get excited to look, show and share small video captures 
as you're walking through previewed homes for them. Your lender should be updating your clients weekly on mortgage interest rates. Pair that with your communication on previewing properties for them, and this will make you an unstoppable referral-based agent because you connected that client with your lender and you are now an elite home buying team. Let's look at the top home amenities that the next gen buyers crave. Number one, particularly for those who do have children, it's all about location. Spacious yet affordable homes in the suburbs, things that will benefit their young families, including their pets, parks, jogging trails, and highly rated schools. So how far are they looking to buy from where they currently live? According to NARN, they stay close by. They wanted to move only a meeting at 10 miles from their prior residence. This is useful to know if you're advertising or marketing within a geographical range. You can promote neighborhoods within 10 to 12 miles that may be attractive. You may even suggest something outside of that range if it's more affordable or has better amenities, especially if your buyer's employment will continue to be a work from home possibility. They may favor a more quiet neighborhood or they may desire a more walkable area and not enjoy car driving. More than any other age group, the quality of the neighborhood is 63% of why and where all buyers choose to buy. Convenience to where their job is located makes up 71% for ranges of ages between 23 to 31. Since COVID and remote, remote working, we'll see how this gets affected in the next two to three years. I remember the early 2000s when Silicon Valley first introduced work from home, when the roads were massively congested and companies were getting stipends from the California government to keep people from driving. It didn't last very long, but a few years. Then employers reported employee work had significantly dropped. And I'm not sure if that's the path that we'll see for the future, but I kind of bet large companies will pull back their employees and medium-sized companies will see the benefit of not having to pay for office accommodations. But that's a question to ask the buyer. What is your work commute like right now? Do you go to the office on a specific day? Is convenience to your office an important factor for you on this purchase? And then quality of the school district, 55% um, said that that was a very important driving factor in their neighborhood choices. And then 55% want to be near their friends and family. Most millennials and Gen Z grew up with technology. And as adults, they want a home with smart features like the Nest thermostat, smart locks, home securities with video surveillance, and automatic lighting. They want to control things like their heating and cooling system and even appliances from their app. This may not be possible with older homes, but be sure to highlight any of those features in your listings when possible, especially if your future sellers ended up replacing a stove or a washing machine that is Wi-Fi capable. Even if your sellers don't have it connected to the Wi-Fi and they didn't download the app, many home buyers as millennials would see that that's a possibility and instantly be more attracted to that home because the appliances match their technology desires. They like to do everything from the, the, the phones. Because so many millennials now work from home, they're looking for a house with room to create an office, a dedicated space where they can take Zoom meetings and calls. They want to be able to shut the doors to the office at the end of the day and not be reminded of work. Among millennials who have never purchased a home, 42% say that their dog will play a role in what house that they do buy. A home with a great outdoor space is certainly more conducive when there's a pet in the family. But again, preferences are going to really vary. Ask the people about pets and needs up front. Build that emotional connection. When previewing those homes on Thursdays, you could share a video of a workspace or a small photo of the backyard showcasing something that they've discussed is a need for them in their future home. Millennials may be better educated than any other, any other generation, but they're also more deeply in debt. 
When they do attempt to buy a home, they're often faced with tight budgets and not much money left over once a property is purchased. So finding a home that does not need a lot of work is desirable for many next-gen buyers. This generation also struggles with knowledge on home care basics. They generally grew up in a household where repairs and upgrades were vetted out to contractors. So this generation could really benefit from small monthly maintenance tutorials once they buy a house or even during the home buying process to help them realize how easy some of the maintenance needed is, like how to edge your lawn, how simple cleaning out an air filter is. Oops. I love how my computer lets me know it's time to rest my eyes. Um, how simple clean out that air filter is, or how important it is to wash your external AC units and so forth. We know the next-gen buyers are very tech savvy. So what are some of their must-have tools for you to remain relevant? Here's the bare minimum. You must have a great CRM, video, whether it's short and long form, online reviews, active social media presence, which means posting relevant content, and apps to improve the process and customer experience. Here, who here used DocuSign for transactions? If you don't have a solution for digital sig uh, signatures, you're definitely going to be losing ground. Modernize how you complete transactions with a customizable platform of applications that simplify the end-to-end -end contract process. Lenders basically use DocuSign, so make sure you're utilizing the same and even record a video early Sorry, um, record a video early that shows somebody how to walk through DocuSign or what they're signing. If you're a NAR member, I believe you save like 20% when you sign up. And just remember, please, fax machines are dead. Want a more personalized and scalable texting solution? Well, there's Textly. You can upload your contact list. You can segment them. You can send custom messages all based on preferences like listing price, bed and bath areas, specific property listings. This creates a far more personal touch and you can launch text campaigns straight from your own phone. Want a simple way to share your contact information from your mobile device or share a link on Facebook again? Well, go ahead and just scan this QR code with your phone. What you're going to see is my page in action. And what I can do with this, electronic business card is I can share it on anything. And I've created it to be a QR code on documentation, on listings, on my business card. I have this QR code now on my keychain and I carry that around on my purse. It was about $18 to buy it from Etsy and it looks great. It's a new way to connect. You can add it to branding items, pop buys. You can print the QR code onto a sticker and put it inside a thank you card. You want to consider digital business cards like this one, maybe from card page. This one's 100% free. I didn't pay for this QR code through flowcode.com, and I didn't pay for this digital business card. But there's a lot of different options out there. Just find the one that works for you, but allows you to add buttons like contact. Add contact to a simple button. Hyper site and hyperlink your websites add your phone or text hyperlinks, showcases reviews or social media. And even on this one, the one I like is the second link there is get to know our team. It goes to a presentation on my Canva page to allow people to get to know my team and feel more connected with us. I have it linked to all my social media channels. And then this way, clients can book a time to chat with me directly on my calendly.com account. That takes out the manual process of typing in a website, social media channel. It takes out the process for the client having to text back and forth to decide a time that works. They can come on here, pick a day and a time that I've isolated that I'm going to be available. Again, this one's called cardpage.com and the whole um, side of your screen with my picture and my intro, all of that spot was free. The QR code I used from Flowcode is free. 
Calendly in the back, um, I think I might have spent about $30 a year. Here's another example. This one's called bizcarding.com. It allows you to share email, SMS, QR code, social media. You can edit info anytime. Clients just tap the icon and allows them to call, email, text, or follow up. And again, you can add social media links on there. I don't know exactly what they charge, but it's another option as well. Space.io, or called Spatio, provides an easy use solution for digitally gathering visitor details to open houses. Spatio delivers the complete solution to advertising your open house. It captures your leads during and automatically follows up after with a single platform. The automated lead follow-up system ensures that every prospect receives appropriate communication after that open house, and then it integrates into most CRM. It's one of my favorite features is that the seller report is there, so you can show your sellers how many people are signing into your open house, and again, showcase this in your listing binder. The cost is about $25 a month, and again, it's connected to your CRM, and it import contact information. You can showcase the open house listing directly on there, um, but the hard part to remember is that this is a generation of mistrust. They don't want to share their contact information to walk around the open house, so instead of calling it a sign-in form, you can have one flyer printed with your QR code to this sign-in platform, have it in a dollar store picture frame, tell your clients to help reduce paper printing. We have this code that you can scan to sign in to see all the details about this property. That allows you to capture the contact information and start to reverse marketing for the future needs, as well as helping them not feel like they're just a target for open house sign-in sheets. If you or someone on your team is showing properties, you need a mobile-friendly showing scheduler. No more back and forth emails or missed calls. Just share the app and allow people to see and schedule available showings with the tap on their smartphone. You've got Insta showing, local showing, showing time. They are the largest app and they were recently purchased by Zillow. So if you have any issues with that, consider a different option above, but have a digital platform where your customers can schedule a time that works for them. So how do you like this content so far? Have you found that it's valuable? And I'm just going to assume that you said yes. So, so great. Let's wrap it up with some ideas on how to attract, engage, and build trust with this next gen buyer, because that's what we're really here to do is to grow your business. This is the attraction phase. Over half of recent next-gen buyers found their real estate agent through a friend or family member representing the most common source of influence. Other sources include online search, bank recommendations, then home buying counseling agencies and meeting agents at open houses. There appears to be much less common method for next-gen buyers to meet and secure their real estate agent. So the key takeaway is master your database marketing. Stay top of mind with your sphere of influence, build your Google reviews, and post content on social media that's relevant to the person you are trying to speak for. Be the go-to person for all questions that come up about real estate. Next-gen buyers demonstrate a strong preference for video-based platforms compared to text or image-based. Social media accounts. Almost 60% of next-gen buyers search YouTube to learn about personal finance. Creating informative and relevant video-based content is key to attracting the attention of next-gen buyers. So additionally, an overwhelming majority of next-gen buyers spend on average about one to five days on social or one to five hours on social media every day. Demonstrating social media is one of the most reliable ways to stay connected to this demographic. This is the engagement phase. Next-gen home buyers overwhelmingly prefer to rely on email compared to any other format when conducting business or financial matters. Given the complexity of the home buying process, many next-gen buyers may prefer email-based communication that provides a clear paper trail because of trust issues. Half of buyers prefer to meet face-to-face -face with the real estate agent. 
but half of them prefer to meet through Zoom or another online way with their lender. They don't want to come into the banks anymore. This is probably going to be partially because everybody has the fear of going to the bank and it takes two to three hours to apply for a vehicle loan. And it does take a long time. So Zoom is an easy way to integrate that communication on the lending side and to create an engaged communication path with the buyer so that they feel comfortable. But our buyers are also getting video call fatigue because of COVID. So many companies were holding Zooms all the time. So now our buyers are stuck between they want a desire for flexibility to conduct business around their schedules and around technology, but they want a more personable interaction. So now we've got the trust phase. This often occurs at the beginning stages of the attraction and engagement phase but you must continue to build trust through the entire process. The currency of trust today is online reviews and recommendations. So how important are reviews and recommendations? 4% says not at all. 10% says slightly important. 23% said moderately important. 41% said was very important on their decision was the online reviews and recommendations are moving forward with a real estate professional. How are you doing with your online reviews and testimonies? So let's summarize this. It's been a long road for next-gen buyers. They have faced one financial crisis after another. After coming of age around the Great Recession, then they hit COVID, which pandemic, which further amplified the uncertainty and lack of trust that many buyers feel about the housing development and those involved in the buying process. Despite those challenges, they are moving forward with home buying and demonstrating a continued sense of resilience and adaptability as they enter the housing market at greater levels year after year. Consider the following recommendations your efforts should track and engage with next-gen buyers. Double down on your online reviews. With particular emphasis on Google, over half said reviews were very important to finding a loan officer and a real estate agent. Who wants to get found on a local search for real estate agent near me? Google has three ranking factors that affect whether or not you get found in local searches. And one of those factors is reviews. Remember, I did a whole class on Google Business Profile and growing your online reviews. So reach out and we can talk about your strategy directly on this. Next, double down our social video content. A majority of next-gen buyers use social media between one to five hours a day. Don't overlook this channel. Double down on high touch versus high tech. You can't automate trust. Use tech when appropriate, but build trust through the entire process by great and clear communication. Consider YouTube in your online content strategy with an emphasis on video. Over 74% of next-gen buyers cite YouTube as a go-to source for content over books. They don't even read a book. They go straight to YouTube. The top three search engines used by next-gen is Google, YouTube, and TikTok. The way they search for information is keyword driven. For example, local restaurant near me. Then they look at the reviews. They're most likely to believe in a high ranking website is a sign of a brand's credibility and trustworthiness. They often use mobile devices to access online content to so make sure that your platform that you're using showcases that and can be read easily online through their mobile devices. They like visually pleasing web designs. They use a ton of email. They frequently use social media and they often search for video content over reading. So what do you do next? First, do you want to learn about the seller buy down strategy? Are you interested in a lender partnership versus a lender vendor? You can schedule a conversation on my calendar. Just open your phone and scan the QR code, pick a time that works for you, and we're all set. Let's get strategic about your strategy and build an unforgettable partnership for your clients together so that you can be the elite 
home buying team. In summary, here's what we covered today. How are you going to take this training to the next step in your business? So who are the next buyer gen, uh, next gen buyers? How are we going to overcome buyer affordability? What do they really want from their agent? What are their top must-have home amenities? What must-have digital tools do you need in your toolbox? How are you going to build trust and attract and engage with next-gen buyers? What is your one big takeaway? What was the important piece of this that you learned that was going to really change how you do business going forward? I would love to know and partner with you on that. So go ahead, let me know what we can do to help you grow. Let me know what your big takeaway was and how we can help you strategically plan how to implement all of these things in your business.